Los Angeles, 1942, just a few months after the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor. Panic was in the air. People imagined another attack, but this time on the City of Angels, a place which was churning out aircraft with impressive speed. Folks envisioned the Hollywood Hills on fire, people fighting in the streets, and then it came that fateful day. February 25th, Coastal Radar picks up an unidentified flying object about 125 miles west of Los Angeles. Oh god, the radar technician thinks. It's heading straight for the city. Half an hour later and more radars pick up the object. Air raid sirens fill the air. Citizens of LA watch in horror as anti-air artillery and 50 caliber rounds fire above their heads. The Japanese are here, they think. They imagine their houses on fire, their windows being shot to pieces. This was the Battle of Los Angeles, and we imagine many of you have never even heard of it. It's just one fact of many you're going to hear today. It's part of a history lesson that will blow you away. Settle in, secure your position, and watch the facts fly by. Number 50. Battle of Los Angeles Continued Ok, so we couldn't just leave it there. You're thinking, there was a Battle of Los Angeles and no one even told me about it. I must have missed that bit in my high school history class. It's not quite as it seems. It's certainly true that people feared that the Japanese might move an aircraft carrier closer to the USA and start an invasion from there. In Oakland, schools were closed because of this fear. There were blackouts too. In Seattle, businesses were smashed up by angry mobs because they left their lights on making them a bullseye for fearsome Japanese bombers. The situation got hairier. On February 24, 1942, when US naval intelligence warned that an attack might be imminent, at 2.25 am the next day the sirens sounded and a blackout was ordered. The 37th Coast Artillery Brigade started firing 50 caliber machine guns and anti-aircraft shells. Imagine being there. Imagine seeing that as you rubbed your sleepy eyes early in the morning but nothing came. Not one Japanese plane was spotted, buildings and cars were damaged and five people died, three in car accidents related to the chaos, and another two people's hearts gave out during that very stressful hour of hearing gunfire. The next day, the headlines were all about this Los Angeles attack, or non-attack. But what had actually happened? Some media said war nerves, and others called it a false alarm. But the people, the people were rightly concerned. Was there something the government wasn't telling them? They had to wait to get answers. After the war ended, the Japanese stood up and said, hey guys, we never went anywhere near Los Angeles, you were all tripping. To cut a long story short, that flying object had been picked up by radar and was an off-course weather balloon. The Battle of Los Angeles had been part panic, part missing balloon. Some folks said the object was an alien UFO, but we won't get into that today. Number 49. Ok, so that was more of a story than a hard fact. And there will be many more insane stories, but let's have a look at some facts too. The US Army is massive, absolutely massive. In total, it contains around 1.4 million personnel. A few more people than the country of Estonia. But it's not the biggest army, that would be the North Korean Army, at around 2.2 million personnel. Number 48. Believe it or not, the US Army is actually older than the US. Americans celebrate the birth of their nation on July 4th. The year the nation was established was 1776, but the date that the Army was established was June 14th, 1775. It makes sense, really, if they were going to kick out those damned imperialist Brits, they needed an army to do it. Well, the French helped a bit too, as did some heroic foreign military leaders that we'll talk about later. Number 47. We just said that the army employs around 1.4 million people, with some of them being in the reserves. Still, that means it's the second largest employer in the USA behind Walmart, which employs around 2.3 million people. Amazon's a long way behind, employing something close to 800,000 people. Number 46. 16 of the 45 US presidents have served in the army. Dwight D. Eisenhower served in the army in both World War I and World War II. Theodore Roosevelt is the only president to have won the Distinguished Medal of Honor for his service in the army. During the Spanish-American War, he led a desperate and gallant charge up San Juan Hill, risked life and limb under a barrage of enemy fire, and then he jumped into a trench and killed a man, making it possible for the boys behind him to advance. Number 45. We guess some of you have at one point owned a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses, but we also guess that you didn't know that they were a brainchild of the US Army. That's right, there used to be a thing called the United States Army Air Corps, which was the flying part of the Army before the US Air Force was created. In 1929, there was a guy that was tasked with working with a glasses producer to make glasses that would make life easier for pilots. His name was John A. McCready, Colonel John A. McCready. He was up to the task and he got working on some glasses that wouldn't fog up like goggles and at the same time would reduce the glare from the bright blue sky. In the late 30s, the Ray-Ban aviator glasses were patented and the rest is history. Number 44. 
the US Army created the world's first submarine. This was called the Turtle, and it was introduced in 1774 when the Army was fighting the British during the American Revolutionary War. While the vehicle looked pretty cool, it never really did what it was supposed to do. That was to affix explosives to British warships in New York Harbor. They never pulled it off and that poor old turtle sank into the sea when it was aboard a vessel. Number 43. It's thought that about 2.1 million soldiers fought for the Union during the Civil War. What's maybe surprising is that about a quarter of them were immigrants. If you count the sons of immigrants that fought, then it's closer to half the Army's population. Number 42. During the Second World War, the brand Coca-Cola was already a kind of symbol that represented the American way. And you know what? American soldiers fighting abroad really pined for the stuff. Most of them couldn't get their hands on Coke. Coca-Cola Company President Robert W. Woodruff heard about this and decided it wasn't good enough, so he made a promise. He told soldiers that wherever they were, they would be able to get a Coke for the cost of five cents. But he needed the help of General Dwight Eisenhower to get the Cokes to them. Together, they cooked up a plan to get those addictive cans of tooth-rotting liquid to the soldiers. Coca-Cola opened up a bunch of plants overseas, but it went one step farther when it introduced people called technical observers. These Coke workers wore army uniforms and looked the part, but they weren't actually military. They were only there to make sure that the plants were built and the soldiers got their fix. It actually boosted morale a lot, with one soldier writing this letter. Dear folks, you'll never guess what I had to drink this evening. Not whiskey, not gin, not cavados, not beer, but good old fashioned Coca-Cola in a bottle that's made to fit the hand. Suffice it to say, Coca-Cola did okay out of the deal too. It had entered Europe and it wasn't about to leave. Number 41. There are some sources that will tell you that the US Army pioneered modern guerrilla warfare, but that's debatable. A lot of armies could claim that, but it's certainly true that the man named General Francis Swamp Fox Marion was an excellent guerrilla warfare tactician. This guy, also credited with being the man that led the first special forces in the US, got his nickname because he'd take militiamen into the swamps where they'd wait in hiding for loyalists and British regulars. They didn't fight the regular old way, but would jump out of the swamps and kill. His men, who weren't paid and supplied their own arms and sometimes food, frightened the hell out of the enemy. So we don't get into trouble, we should also add that he was despised by many and criticized for being more than harsh to his men and someone who committed many atrocities. Number 40. From the years 2006 to 2020, 17,645 active duty personnel died while serving in the US Armed Forces. Number 39. 53,402 soldiers died during combat in World War I, and most of those served in the Army. Number 38. The war that saw the most deaths in the US was the Civil War. When you count Union soldiers as well as Confederate soldiers, the number of deaths is between 755,000 and 800,000 victims. That makes it the worst war that US soldiers have ever fought in. Ok, now for something even more surprising. Number 37. The US Army used to use the swastika as a symbol. You heard that right. The 45th Infantry used to pin it on their sleeves, but they only did that to honor their Native American brothers in arms. What you have to remember is that before Adolf Hitler hijacked the symbol, it was used for thousands of years in many different cultures and it was a symbol of good luck. For instance, in Sanskrit it means conducive to well-being. That's why you can still see it today all over Asia, something that surprises less educated travelers. It won't surprise you though because now you know where it came from. Needless to say, when Hitler started using it, the 45th Infantry dropped it. Number 36. Batteries. The US Army needs them and any soldier will tell you that they weigh quite a bit. You see, if you want to go on a mission, you need to power stuff. It takes around 400 pounds of batteries for 30 men going on a 3 day mission. You can actually find a slew of articles talking about the Army's battery problem. Number 35. In the late 1960s, the Army introduced something called the walking truck or if you want to get technical, the cybernetic anthropomorphous machine. The giant robot had four big legs and while it looked like something from a sci-fi movie, it wasn't exactly nimble. The plodding machine was designed to solve the Army's age-old problem of carrying stuff. Like in the movie Alien, a person would sit inside it and control it with their feet and hands. It weighed 3,000 pounds, traveled at 5 miles per hour. While it looked like a good idea, it wasn't. It was so tiring to operate that a person could only move for a short amount of time. Number 34. Only 28% of folks aged 17 to 23 in the US qualify to serve in the Army. It has high standards. One recruiting commander said this about those standards, We don't want to sacrifice quality. If we lower the quality, yes, we might be able to make our mission, but that's not good for the organization. Number 33. In 2020, the Pentagon's budget meant $178 billion would go to the Army. $207.1 billion for the Navy and Marine Corps, a further $191.8 billion for the Air Force, and just $15.4 billion for the Space Force. Number 32. 
who first looked at the Grand Canyon and thought, wow, nice, can't wait to tell everyone about this and put it on a map. It was the Army. You see, the U.S. Army was responsible for mapping much of the USA. In the early 1800s, the U.S. government wanted to map the entirety of the USA, which was no easy feat. The Lewis and Clark expedition was the solution, and that was led by the U.S. Army. Number 31. George Washington didn't actually want to be commander of the Army. He didn't think he was up to the task. He was happy when the war was over, but then he resigned. This is what he told Congress, happy in the confirmation of our independence and sovereignty, and pleased with the opportunity afforded to the United States of becoming a respectable nation. I resign with satisfaction the appointment I accepted with diffidence, a diffidence in my abilities to accomplish so arduous a task, a man of humility. As you'll soon see, there were many more great military leaders. Number 30. After World War II and for many years on, the U.S. Army had a dump a thon. In total, the Army admitted to secretly dumping 64 million pounds of nerve and mustard gas agents in the sea. Also thrown in were 400,000 chemical filled bombs, landmines, and rockets, and with that, 500 tons of radioactive waste. It was revealed that storage was expensive and dangerous, and destroying was difficult, so overboard went the stuff. Number 29. During World War I, the German military was unhappy with the U.S. Army. It didn't much like the shotguns the Army were using, claiming that being hit by a shotgun was unnecessarily painful. Number 28. The U.S. hasn't fully banned the use of landmines. Under President Obama, there was a ban on the use of landmines except for the defense of South Korea, but under the Trump administration, restrictions were lifted. In 1997, the Mine Ban Treaty was signed by most countries, but the U.S., along with China, Egypt, India, Israel, Pakistan, and Russia, did not sign. Number 27. The problem with landmines is they tend to kill your own. In 1997, the New York Times cited a Pentagon report that said thousands of U.S. Army soldiers in Vietnam and Korean wars were killed or severely injured by American-made landmines. Okay, sorry to sound so depressing, we promise something amusing soon. Number 26. Who doesn't like a good dog story? The U.S. Army during World War I, like other countries, employed dogs for various tasks. The Army's most decorated dog was named Stubby. Working for the 102nd Infantry Regiment, Stubby served for 18 months and joined 17 battles on the Western Front. He was injured by a German grenade at one point, but soon made a comeback and went back to the trenches. Stubby was then promoted to sergeant. He could find injured men, could alert soldiers to gas attacks, and could hear the sound of artillery before the soldiers, so he was able to tell the soldiers when rounds were coming in. When Stubby gave the sign, they ducked for cover. Number 25. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency went a step further with animals many years later. Researchers implanted beetles with nerve and muscle stimulators. That meant they could be controlled remotely. They were also big enough to carry heat sensors and cameras. These things would be great for search and rescue missions, although we're not sure if the Army ever used them. Number 24. In the 1970s, the UK paid the Mauritian government to take islanders from Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean. The US military wanted the island, but it didn't want the islanders. Those poor guys were resettled, but they mostly ended up in the slums. Number 23. Talking about land, the US Army owns 15 million acres of land in the United States, which is about 24,000 square miles. If you can't conceive the size, it would be the 42nd largest state if the land was in one piece. Number 22. In 2003, a US Army sergeant was on a one-month leave visiting family and friends. While back on American soil, he decided to play the lottery. He won, and he won big, taking home $88.9 million. Number 21. Arguably, the most shocking U.S. Army war crime was something that happened in the Vietnam War. On March 16, 1968, U.S. Army soldiers walked into a village and murdered 347 to 504 unarmed citizens, most of them women and children. There are more gory details, but we won't get into that today. You can see for yourself, it's called the My Lai Massacre. Number 20. At the beginning of World War I, the U.S. Army had 117,000 personnel. Then came the Selective Service Act of 1917 a draft, and by the end of the war, the Army had drafted 2.7 million men. Number 19. The Navy had a song, and the Air Force had a song, but the Army didn't. So in 1956, it was decided that the Army Goes Rolling Along should be the official Army song. Number 18. Do Army soldiers take the greatest risks? That's up for debate, but we can tell you that 70% of all Medals of Honor were awarded to Army soldiers. Number 17. Hungry soldiers are a big problem. You need to give those guys their sustenance, but getting food to the troops can be problematic. That's why the Army for a few years now has been trying to figure out how to use 3D printing for food. Number 16. Sticking with the futuristic, DARPA has a next-generation non-surgical neurotechnology program, 
and through that it's hoped that soon soldiers will be able to control drones with their minds. DARPA is also working on a standalone contact lens that a soldier could wear. This would enhance his visual capabilities. Number 15. We just said his, but 19% of army officers are women, and 14% of enlisted force are women. The military at this time does not report on LGBTQ plus service members. Number 14. When George Washington was putting together his army, he was well aware that his men needed a lot of training. He contacted a decorated Prussian military expert named Baron Friedrich von Steuben, a person who was pivotal in the independence of the United States. He was one of the fathers of the Continental Army. He wrote the book Regulations for the Order and Discipline of the Troops of the United States, and he later became Chief of Staff for President Washington. What some people didn't know back then was that von Steuben was gay. It's not clear just who he was romantically involved with because at the time same-sex intimate relationships were illegal. Number 13. It was reported in 2010 that the US Army had decided not to use Velcro anymore because for one it got clogged with dirt and for another thing it made a loud ripping sound which might get a person shot. Then, some years later, there were rumors that the Army had designed a new kind of Velcro that didn't make much sound at all. The sound reduction was 95%. This was all apparently classified. Maybe that's why we can't find much information about it now. We're getting close to the top 10 now. Number 12. This relates to all branches of the military, but we think you should know about it since it signifies the changing times. The U.S. Department of Defense used to be called the U.S. Department of War. It was named that from 1789 to 1947. Number 11. In the 1950s, the U.S. Army sprayed microscopic zinc cadmium sulfide particles over parts of the U.S. and Canada. This wasn't about hurting anyone, but just to see where the particles would go. Since the substance was fluorescent, they could judge what a chemical weapons attack would look like. It was concluded that under most meteorological conditions, large areas could be covered by dropped aerosols. We don't think any Americans were hurt during those operations, but the secret tests remain controversial today. Studies have shown that some damage could have been done, while other studies have stated exposure to zinc cadmium sulfide at those levels could cause people to become sick. Still, some of the critics have said using the US as a testing ground was perhaps not great. Number 10. Operation Big Itch has to be one of the best covert operation names. This happened at the Army's Biological and Chemical Weapons Testing Facility called Dugway Proving Ground. In this operation, the Army wanted to know if tropical rat fleas could be dropped out of the sky in little bombs. If so, would the fleas float down and start making people terribly itchy? We should say that none of the fleas in the trials were carrying biological agents. The tests were successful, which is pretty scary. The fleas not only fell to the ground, but they invaded the test subjects waiting for them. Guinea pigs. It was concluded that if the fleas were dropped on an enemy battalion, they could cause havoc for about 24 hours. Similar tests were performed in the 60s with mosquitoes, and they were dropped where humans lived, and yes, they did bite people. Number 9. Ok, the last of the secret tests. In 1966, the US Army wanted to know if it was possible that an American subway could be hit by a poisonous gas attack. What they did was a simulated attack. Undercover Army personnel went into the New York subway carrying light bulbs filled with Bacillus subtilis, which was thought to be harmless. They smashed the bulbs and then saw what happened. An Army report later said, a large portion of the working population in downtown New York City would be exposed to disease if one or more pathogenic agents were disseminated covertly in several subway lines at a period of peak traffic. When this news was made public, there was quite the uproar. The Army said, hey, no one got harmed, but some folks said, how do you know? You didn't monitor all the people. But the fact is, the law states that if such testing is done, there should be voluntary, informed consent. Doctors now say that Bacillus subtilis is a pathogen that can make people ill, but there is little chance it could kill someone. Number 8. The US Army has in its own arsenal something called dense depleted uranium bullets. If you hit an armored vehicle with one of them, it can pierce the armor, and then the vehicle will catch fire. It's one way of blowing something up. Number 7. Only five army officers have received five stars. One of them was the president-to-be Dwight D. Eisenhower. Number 6. The US Army wanted to freak out Vietnamese soldiers in the Vietnam War. They used what's called psychological warfare and played on the Vietnamese troops' belief in ghosts. This was called Operation Wandering Soul and consisted of blasting out spooky sounds into the jungle. The tape, called Ghost Tape Number 10, was also played outside US bases. Number 5. Soldiers started wearing dog tags around their neck in the Civil War, but back then they weren't official. Soldiers still wear them today, and on them you'll find a soldier's name, social security number, blood type, and religious preference. During World War II, there were only three religious preferences available, P for Protestant, C for Catholic, and H for Hebrew or Jewish. 
The army has branched out now and you can get more religions or none at all. An army website said that you can even get agnostic or Jedi or druid, it's totally up to the soldier, so we guess some of them have fun with it. In the government and in the military you might hear the word God a lot, but these days religious diversity is embraced. Number 4. Gulf War Syndrome is something that affected and still affects soldiers who came home from the 1991 Gulf War. It can be hellish, with veterans complaining of muscle pain, fatigue, chronic diarrhea, rashes, anxiety and depression, insomnia, defects of memory, tooth decay, loss of balance, bladder dysfunction, and problems thinking. Some have even said that babies of veterans have been born with abnormalities that could be associated with the syndrome. It's bad, really bad, but those things also affect people who haven't gone to war. What's startling though is that Gulf War veterans are twice as likely to suffer from those ailments. No one really knows what caused it. Was it exposure to biological weapons, pesticides, or was it from taking a nerve gas prophylaxis? That's what's so worrying, not knowing. Number 3. For a long time it was thought that US soldiers returning from the Vietnam War were spat on by anti-war activists. Some people still think that today. It didn't happen. It's a myth. Fake news. There were stories going around saying that hippies spat on soldiers when they landed at San Francisco airport. Not true. The soldiers would have landed at military air bases where activists wouldn't have been allowed to enter. Number 2. The movie Saving Private Ryan is actually based on a real person except there were no Ryans in the real version. The Nyland brothers were real people, four brothers of Irish descent who all fought in the US military during World War II. It's a very sad story. Technical Sergeant Robert Nyland died on June 6 in Normandy after saying he'd stay behind and try to hold off the advancing Germans. Second Lieutenant Preston Nyland died in action on June 7, 1944, also in Normandy. On May 16, 1944, Technical Sergeant Edward Nyland had been captured by the Japanese and was a POW. He jumped out of a B-25 and his team assumed that he died. Can you imagine what poor old Mr. and Mrs. Nyland were thinking back in Tonawanda, New York when they were told that three of their sons were dead? Mrs. Nyland apparently received the three death notifications on the same day. Her only consolation was that Sergeant Frederick Nyland was alive and well, albeit fighting in a deadly war. Just like in the movie, the then War Department said enough is enough, we need to get that last brother back to New York. Nothing spectacular happened after that, he was sent to England, then back to the US. Another added bonus was that in May 1945 the family got word that Edward was alive and he was coming home. Number 1. Ok, here we are at number 1. We thought a fitting fact here would be to tell you how difficult it is to join the army. Here it goes. You must be from the US, and you must be aged 17 to 34. If you're 17, you'll need your parents' permission. You'll need that high school diploma and you can't have more than two dependents. If you tick all the boxes, then you can go and have a military entrance processing station medical exam. You're not in yet. Now you'll have to take the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery Exam. A couple of questions we saw on a practice exam were how many moons does Saturn have and how long is the small intestine? They aren't easy questions since Saturn has named and unnamed moons and various sources give different answers. As for the small intestine, it can be anything from 10 feet to 35 feet. If you get in, for the first six months you'll get paid in the region of $20,000. Now, educate yourself some more and watch 50 insane tank facts that will shock you. Or have a look at this, 50 insane fighter jet facts that will shock you.